so first of all let me tell you what are the trends in last 3 year paper and uh, what upsc is trying to test from you so that you can uh, score a very good marks so first of all what has happened in last 3 years is that some of the peripheral thinkers some of the secondary thinkers uh, let's take the example of robert michaels in last 3 years robert michael has come twice okay and he is not a primary thinker uh, perspectives like feminist perspective, reference theory, the secondary kinds of thinkers, secondary theories are getting more prominence. Even UPSC has asked about subaltern perspective in last three years. So what they are trying to test from you is also the secondary and not so uh, prominent thinkers. So first you have to keep this in mind. Secondly, what they are doing is they are changing uh, unit wise the weightage in a paper. So let's take the example of CSE 2023. Uh, there are many questions, around 60 marks question came from research methodology. If you take the example of CSE 2024, now they did not ask Darkheim in sociology paper one. They were asking a lots of questions from topics like stratification, uh, but they are not touching one of the prominent thinker Darkheim. So you can see how they are playing with the weightage of different units. Now you cannot afford to neglect any unit, be it work and economic life. They're also consistently 40, 50 marks question is coming. And that too, uh, from repeated theme, gig economy and change in the uh, work and economic life uh, due to the liberalization, privatization, digitization, artificial intelligence. Uh, there can be n number of ways this particular question can be asked, but the theory remains same. Thirdly, what you need to keep in mind is that sociology uh, all the units are interlinked with one another. So if you are not very good in research methodology, for example, so you will not be able to apply postmodernist theories, subaltern perspective, feminism, structuralism, functionalism, different strands, different schools or phenomenology, ethnometrology in your applied questions. So all the units are interlinked. What you are studying in uh, the thinker chapter, chapter four will come again and again in politics and society, in uh, stratification, in religion and society, those things will get repeated. So if you are not understanding sociology in a uh, coherent manner, then you will not be able to score good marks. So this also you need to keep in mind. Another factor which has gained prominence in recent time is the usage of example. The more dynamic questions they are asking, the more the importance of examples is increasing in the paper, specifically sociology paper two. So if you see the sociology paper two uh, of this year, then you can find around 50% of questions are from the contemporary themes. Now for those contemporary themes, having thinkers is not possible. Having, having thinkers, uh, specific thinkers who have talked about all these topics is impossible. So contemporary examples will come to your rescue as well as the various strands which we learn and the basic thinkers which we have learned along with data. So collecting contemporary examples from newspaper, from topper's copy, from topper's notes, from model answers is extremely important to score good marks in the contemporary or the dynamic topics that you need to keep in mind. Now, the another factor which is uh, uh, arising to the prominence is that uh, any kind of uh, monotony, monotony in terms of presentation, like you are writing each and every question in paragraph format, each and every question in point format is not something which is uh, rewarding you. So you need to mix it up. You need to use in some questions paragraphs. You need to use in some questions point formats. You need to use in some question tabular format. Just mix it up. Just try to attract the examiner so that he or she has a reason to reward you more marks than others because each and every one of you are looking into the same sources. Nowadays, there are lots of telegram channels and all the telegram channel, uh, channels are reposting same kinds of content. So at the end of the day, the source which you are following will be quite similar. So even a small, small things like adding examples, adding a theoretical perspective, mixing up a presentation, having an impactful introduction can make a big change when you see the larger perspective. Another thing, another thing which I want to tell you is uh, that most of you read a lot for sociology paper one. You are reading a lot of books. Some uh, some are reading even uh, Harlembus and Holborn. Okay, a very, very bulky book. I'm not telling you to not read, but read it very, very selectively. Few chapters like research methodology uh, has been covered in Harlembus and Holborn very well. But for other units, it's, it's just simply a waste of time. What will happen is you will enjoy reading it, but you will not be able to retain it. When you are not able to retain it, it is useless for you because each one of you has come to pass this examination, not to become a sociologist. If you wanted to become a sociologist, you can just pursue masters and then PhD and then go to abroad and become a sociologist. Our purpose of 
reading uh, things here is just to pass the examination. So you need to be very, very mindful about it. But most of you neglect sociology paper two. What you read in sociology paper two is Nitin Sagwan. Nitin Sagwan has nothing in sociology paper two. It is just writing post independence a book in sociology paper two also. There is lack of thinkers. The section uh, C is absolutely dead in Nitin Sagwan. So if you are reading it, and you think you can score very, very good marks in sociology paper two, you, you will not be able to score good marks in sociology paper two. You will need to reinforce certain units from IGNU, like caste system, like social classes. Social classes, 50 marks question consistently is coming from that chapter. Uh, from tribal, simply two, three themes are coming again and again. And if you look into the Nitin Sagwan, it has not covered it well. It has, uh, it is not doing justice to the, uh, the, the topic. So you need to be very mindful. You need to give symmetrical timing. If you get 150 marks in sociology paper one and 90 marks in paper two, everything is uh, ruined. It, it will not help you. And let me tell you, 80% of students will score good marks in paper one and they fail miserably in paper two. The average marks in sociology paper two since last five years is 115. That's it. Very few are scoring more than 130. The people who are scoring more than 130 are clearing mains for sure. So you need to give symmetrical time. You need to give respect to sociology paper two also. It is also 250 marks. As a tiny key, the paper one is of 300 marks and paper two is of 200 marks. So you need to give respect to sociology paper two as well. Over and above all of these, don't procrastinate. Most of you are trying to hold n number of notes. But what you need to do is, first of all, unit wise, try to solve PYQ repeated themes. Because even in very dynamic paper, 50% of questions will come from them. And also in dynamic question, those theories will be applicable. So they are key. Unit wise, try to solve all the PYQ repeated themes. Wherever you are lacking, wherever you feel that your content is not that uh, good or the notes you are following has not content, just fill it with the notes which I have uploaded, Pratik Mandri, Animesh Pratan. Why I have uploaded them? Just because they have covered repeated PYQ themes. That's all. There are more notes like Neha Bosi, but that is very, very bulky. She has uh, almost included everything of IGNU. So if you want to uh, read IGNU notes, we have uploaded sociology paper one, paper two notes. Barring first three units, everything is uploaded. And that uh, that covers the entire IGNU modules. So you can fill gaps from there also. So you need to keep this thing in mind. You should not procrastinate. If you have to give a test, give on time. Okay. So uh, see, uh, like 2021 20, students are there. How many have joined? Only 20% will join. 10, 15% will persistently write. If you will persistently write every day, then you will have 99% of chance to clear prelims and mains. The competition in real sense is very, very less. 90% of the students are just doing time pass and are not disciplined enough. When there will be paper coming in last two, three months, they will be studying heavily, but they are not disciplined. So you have to be very, very disciplined. Give all the tests, attend all the discussions, try to follow all the guidelines, strategy, reach out to us. If you have any query, 